Good evening. After 35 years at Channel 5, the no-nonsense Natalie Jacobson told staff and viewers yesterday that July 18th would be her last day behind the anchor desk. For many years now, Natalie has been an outspoken critic of the direction local TV news has taken, an emphasis on celebrity, salacious or tubid crime, and a lack of in-depth reporting about issues that affect the community. Here's a little of what Natalie told the WCVB staff yesterday. I've addressed many crowds in my life. This is the toughest moment I've ever had, to stand before my colleagues, to reminisce a bit with you, to give you some sense of how proud I am of you and of us. We come together, we, this television station in our community, in times of crisis and times of joy. I think we all understand that information controls fear. Even during 9-11, when the sky literally seemed to be falling, we did what we do. We worked hard to learn the facts and share them with our neighbors. And as awful as it all was on that day, through that week, we brought perspective and as a result, a sense of calm to the moment, a moment that changed our lives forever. Then on the other hand, celebrating joy is all the moment more wonderful when we share it. The Red Sox, the Red Sox, the Red Sox. The nightly build up to September, every night on the news. The Yankees, the pennant, the World Series. I walked down the streets of Boston on Boylston Street that night with hundreds of thousands of other fans, another moment of life, an exhilarating time that will live with us forever, and that Channel 5 allowed everyone to share together. For me, bringing people together for the big stories is exhilarating, and there have been so many over these 35 years. The dedication of the Kennedy Library, remember when Jacqueline Kennedy turned up her nose at President Carter when he tried to give her a smooch on the cheek? We captured that. The presidential campaigns of our local sons, Dukakis and Kerry, each losing to a bush. The 78 blizzard, a natural disaster that brought out the best in human nature, and we were 24-7 for a whole week. The Challenger explosion that took a native daughter. The pops on the Esplanade when the curmudgeon Arthur Fiedler showed up seconds before airtime and just grunted at me. <laughs> Would he talk when the cameras came on? <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> Liberty's birthday party in New York Harbor, Nelson Mandela, the Pope, Cardinal Law in Rome, busing, the Great Chelsea Fire, the Hotel Lennox, the Boston Marathon, the documentaries, the House on Salem Street, September Song. So many stories, so much life. How lucky are we to be in this business? We journalists have an extraordinary window on the world. Our profession offers opportunities to participate in life as does no other profession to meet people, to probe their thoughts, their insights, and their motives. It is a privilege that we each have. And Natalie Jacobson is here. And what a wonderful writer you are and always have been. Aren't you a love? You look at, Thank you. I always appreciated your um, I had to, you words. know, Emily, I had to write that, which seemed really odd because I'm talking to my colleagues with whom yeah. I speak every day. But I knew how nervous I was. I could understand. I knew how. Because I mean, usually I, you speak off the cuff. <laughs> yeah, I was crying. You know, I was mm. crying, and I thought, what if I get up there? I can't remember my own name. I mean, my colleagues deserve mm. better. So, as it turned out, I was so emotional. I was glad that I did write it. <laughs> you have thought in the past about leaving Channel Five. I mean, it happens. You know, the contract comes up. You look. You say, well, I could move on. I could try something else. There's mm -hmm. a whole world out there. Why now? You know, I don't know. Um, Maybe it was just time. Sometimes that's a, an honest answer. Uh, my contract was coming up again the end of July 31st, and I thought, do I want to do this again for another year? And I decided no, um, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, you know, the world has changed, television has changed, and my role at Channel 5 had really been reduced to a few minutes of of uh, reading the six o'clock news, all the other things mm -hmm. that I so loved, and you know, well, no, you were our news director for years, um, are, are gone now. We don't do any of those things. So the challenge was gone, the fun was gone. And also, simultaneously, I've been working on this uh, a multimedia boomer business, my next big thing, to try to create a community where people who are looking to figure out, so how do I live now, you know? We don't die when we're 65 anymore, I hope. <laughs> You know, it used to be you work to 65, you 
played golf for a couple of years and then was the end. But now we're told we're going to live to 90 or whatever. So there's an opportunity for a whole another phase of our lives as we get to be 50, 55, 60. So um, the combination of those two elements, I think, made it now. That's probably the best way I can answer you. You and I have talked a lot over the years about the changes in a local news scene. And some of it is bad, not all of it, because the technology has made things a lot better. But the focus on celebrity celebrity, the focus yeah. on crime, the focus on things that sort of just are transient as opposed to the deeper issues that affect our community. What caused the change in local news coverage? Probably a, a number of things. Uh, number one, uh, that we're a 24-7 society. People aren't home to do the appointment viewing of uh, the 6 o'clock news or any other newscast, for that matter. Number two, there are a plethora of choices for people to get their information the second that they want it. I was shocked yesterday. We did that, the meeting with the staff, and 30 seconds later, people were calling from all over because mm -hmm. it went on sure. online. Um, so people are on, can get their news on radio. They get it from all of the Internet sources. They get it from cable, which we didn't have in early days of television. Uh, there are, there's more than one, more than three networks out there now on ABC, CBS, NBC. So there are more choices and people are on their own schedules. I think that's one thing or a couple of things. Um, I think money is a very big factor, probably the first factor. You know, you well know, we used to do a 6 o'clock news, an hour show, and then we did a half an hour at 11 o'clock, and we did whatever we did in the morning. And actually, we didn't have an early morning show for a while. Now, with the same staff... You're doing four times as much television news. So you don't have the crews uh, to go out and or, or to, the luxury to let someone go for three days and mm -hmm. go get a story. Not that we ever really did on a regular basis, even when you were the news director. Uh, but it seemed that we had more time to develop that. That's another lot level. I guess the third level would be um, that the audience is shrunk mm -hmm. to... Um, a small group of people, and I think, now you guys say, which, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? I mean, did we shrink the audience because we became right. irrelevant? Or did the audience shrink and then we catered to a group that wasn't interested in mm -hmm. uh, issues kinds of things? I, you know, the jury's out on that one, I suppose. I always made the argument if we, if we were more relevant to people, we would attract a bigger yeah. audience. But, but we always used to say that there came a point when young people, teenagers, young adults, college students, would drift to the news, television news, cable news, the newspapers. That is no longer true, and for the, some of the reasons you, you have just stated. But how much responsibility do we bear for that, and the newspapers as well? Well, I think we do bear responsibility, but it's funny you would mention the young people. This country is celebrity-driven now, in a way I've never seen it. And people our age, I mean, get my hair cut and I see you know, people 40, 50, and 60 reading the stuff my 20-year-old's yeah. reading. What is it? It's, you know, Britney Spears, you know, changed her hairstyle or so-and-so's changed her boyfriend. And I don't get it. I mean, I'm, I've never been attracted to all of that. So, but clearly, you see it everywhere. It's a celebrity-driven kind of, of um, society for some reason. I haven't got the vaguest idea, Emily, why that's true. But it's a factor because then why... Why are we looking at um, women in particular mm -hmm. kind of posing as anchor people who have never covered a story, you know, with low-cut dresses yeah. and lots of makeup and dangling earrings? It has nothing to do with news, and people are watching it. You know, they're not, I think the people who watch those shows are not looking for news. They're looking for more entertainment. So, again, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? On the other hand, when we have a big story, when it really matters, when something really is going down, good or bad, they come to you. Channel 5. No, they come to you. 